WrestlePod is supported by viewers like you. To support WrestlePod and the other programs on this channel, visit patreon.com slash Ian Beaumont live and direct. Two more big wrestling shows this weekend means two more chances for me to make a fool of myself on YouTube. I'm Ian Beaumont. WrestlePod starts right now. From Ian Beaumont live and direct, this is WrestlePod. Yes, welcome back to WrestlePod after a bit of a two-month hiatus due to starting a new job and having to get all that sorted whilst I try to work out how to keep doing these uh, videos. Um, but I'm back, Ian Beaumont here. Good to be back with you uh, for uh, NXT TakeOver War Games and Survivor Series. Uh, these are... Two of the biggest shows of the year. Uh, this particular weekend, definitely one of the biggest weekends of the year. Um, and of course, it has to be said, it is all taking place um, on the backdrop of a... What's got to be said to be a really um, heartbreaking... Um, moment uh, this past week on Raw, even though it was obviously meant to be a, a big, big um, thing. But um, Becky Lynch uh, suffering a concussion and uh, at least a broken nose, possibly a broken face at the hands of, at the fist even, of Nia Jax. Of course, the event is, um, the events, both of them, are taking place at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. And we're going to do, or I'm going to do, um, predictions for these events. So, um, let me explain how I do predictions. If you, This is the first time you've seen me, uh, and it probably is, because for some of you... Um, I will be a late entry <laughs> into the Wrestle League from Wrestle Talk. Yes, uh, Wrestle Talk has decided to do this kind of Wrestle League in the um, predictions thing up to uh, I, I believe it will be up to WrestleMania is the plan, but uh, we'll see if they stick to that. But I'm challenging them anyway uh, because you know what. And there's been a you know been a few challenges this year, so yeah, Russell Pod is challenging Russell Talk. Um, but yeah, so what I do is I look at the match. How would I book it? How do I think it's going to go? They might be similar or even the same in certain cases. And also, um, how many confidence points I have on my prediction? If I'm not very confident, I'll be predict. I'll be. I'll, I'll give it like one or two points. Um, depending on how many matches of the card, the more matches there are, obviously, the higher it goes. So for TakeOver War Games, for example, it's only a four-match card. So the t my most confident pick has only four points on it, where Survivor Series has eight, car has eight matches on the card. So there I have eight points as my top score. You get the picture. Okay, so with all that out of the way... Let's begin with NXT TakeOver. So the first match that uh, I'm predicting, I'm not sure it will be the first match on the card, but it is the one with um, maybe no, um, or, well, I won't say no stakes, but uh, the least stakes in this. Um, Alistair Black 
versus Johnny Gargano. It's a bit of a grudge match because apparently Gargano <laughs> took out Alistair Black. Who'd have thunk it? Um, this is also the one I'm the least confident in because I can see booking scenarios for this one going either way. And honestly, I don't, I don't mind the result here. I, don't, I actually don't particularly... Um, I'm not I'm not so much caring who wins because I, I, I like both guys. Their work is excellent here. And it's it, it really helps that I don't have a dog in this fight. Um, but it also means I can see so much of what could happen. And uh, I don't know. Um, I, the way I would book this, I would book Gargano to go over. Um, and have him sort of... Like, oh... Maybe I am, you know, maybe I am justified, and that will send him further down the heelish path. Um, if you have him lose, it could, um, it might make things, I don't know. I mean, my, my feeling is you need him to win to keep him on this heelish path where he feels he's really justified in his actions. Um, having him lose to Aster Black might create a, a a crisis of conscience moment, which might be what they're going for. I don't know. It's not what I would go for here. Um, but WWE and I don't always agree on a lot of things. So, my thinking here is that we're going to see something along the lines of, um... Maybe Gargano, maybe a repeat of the pattern that we've had in the Tommaso Ciampa matches. Johnny Gargano um, really uh, having that moment where he he tries to go one step further and it backfires on him. And uh, Alistair Black, I think, will come out with the win. Next up for my NXT predictions is the two out of three falls match for the NXT Women's Championship with Shayna Baszler defending the title against Kyrie Sane. Now, traditionally, WWE and in particular NXT do not like hot shotting titles. They have been uh, particularly reticent about having relatively quick title changes. They're always like a couple of months at least. So you would think that Kairi Sane is not winning this one. But, 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 there is... A storyline incoming, I think. Um, and this has actually kind of pervaded all my predictions for NXT TakeOver and Survivor Series. I'm looking ahead because it looks like we've got a storyline building for, well, all the way to WrestleMania. There's a big hint. <laughs> if you follow the news at all in the wrestling world this week, that's a big hint. And my feeling is, yeah, Shane Baszler is going to be quietly, as quietly as it's possible to do in this kind of situation, she's going to be moved out of the women's championship scene to be put into an altogether bigger storyline. And you're going, oh hell, what could be bigger than the NXT Women's Championship? I think you know what will be bigger. So, to, I mean, I wouldn't give uh, her a complete loss without gaining one pinfall. I mean, that would be wrong. Because uh, Shayna Baszler has improved massively over her NXT career, I still don't think she's ready for main roster. But, 
I definitely think, uh, especially as she's got a faction around her now with her fellow MMA four horsewomen, Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir. And there's another big clue. Um, I think that um, this is going to play into the storyline for uh, Shayna Baszler going forward. So, my feeling, my, if I were booking this, I would say, I would have Kari same win anyway. I would, uh, I would say 2-1. Uh, so, so you have all three falls in the match. This will be a long match. Um, no two ways about it. This will be a long match being two out of three falls. Um, so my feeling is, uh, probably if I were booking this, I would say Shayna Baszler gets the first fall. That makes you think, oh, hang on, are they going to keep the title on her? Yeah, <laughs> no. Kyrie saying... Gets a fall back and then wins to the one. And I think that's what the WWE are going to do. The, pretty much exactly as I book it is what I think WWE will do here. I think that uh, Basil will get the first fall. Kyrie Sane will pick up the second, then get the deciding fall at the end. Uh, and I have three confidence points on this. Because probably this would be my most confident, if not for the next match I'm going to talk about, which probably I I have just a little bit, maybe a smidgen more confidence in. Uh, I'm very confident about this particular uh, booking because I think I see what's going on. I think I've seen into WWE's head, and I've seen what's upcoming. Uh, based upon what happened on Raw this week, I think there's very, very much a story that's going to be built up right up to WrestleMania. And then continued afterward with more, you know, big matches just to keep things fun so yeah my feeling is Kyrie Sane will become your second two-time NXT women's champion by two falls to one next up it is the match for the NXT championship as Tommaso Ciampa Defends against the Velveteen Dream. I think this one's probably the straightest call of the night. I mean, Velveteen Dream, don't get me wrong, is well worth being put into a title, into the title picture. He is over like Rover, as the saying goes. Um, but he is nowhere near uh, Tommaso Ciampa. In, well, anyway, really. Um, this honestly feels like it could be somewhat of a squash. Um, it won't be, because they don't tend to do squash matches at TakeOver. But it could end up feeling a little bit like, eh, this was never in doubt. Um, now, the, the, there is some thought that maybe Gargano will... Try and interfere in the match. I, I, if that is going to happen, I'm not certain it will, but if that is going to happen, it's probably going to be to keep the championship on Tommaso Ciampa. I know, shocker, but think about this. He's already said, he already said in his, his, his promo on the last episode of NXT that he wants to take the title off Ciampa. So he's not going to let the Velveteen Dream do it. So, uh, and, and this will probably set up a match for the TakeOver before Royal Rumble. Maybe even the one before WrestleMania as well. Um, I, I've got four confidence points. The most I have for TakeOver this time. 
I've got them all on to Marcel Champa. I think he's retaining here. And by the way, yeah, I'd be booking it the same. And lastly, for NXT TakeOver, we have the War Games match. The uh, Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong def uh, basically defending their win from last year against the War Raiders, Pete Dunne, the WWE UK Champion, and the NXT North American Champion, Ricochet. To me, there is something... There will be something really good about... Having the Undisputed Era, who won last year's match, win again. Uh, it would be, uh, it would say, you know, hang on, these, these guys are, like, really dominant in this match. You make it their own. That's not what I think is going to happen, though. Uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in this prediction, though. Uh... <laughs> Barely any more than I got in Gargano and Black. So I'm only giving this two confidence points. Um, but yeah, this really feels like it could go either way. But I think WWE are wanting to sell the War Raiders to face off against Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong for the NXT ta uh, Tag Team Championships. Probably at the next TakeOver. So, this is where that storyline is going to start playing out. And that's where, you know, I, so it's, it's why I think the booking will favour War Raiders, Pete Dunne and Ricochet. They will pick up the victory, I think. Um, and also probably set up, like, Ricochet versus Adam Cole. Uh, you know, for Adam Cole wanting to uh, take the the North American title back again from 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 Ricochet, who took it off him. So yeah, um, that's why I think this is going. Uh, War Raiders, Dunn, and Ricochet picking up the win and preventing the Undisputed Era from winning War Games two years on the trot. So, those are my predictions for TakeOver War Games. Now let's move on to the Survivor Series. Okay, so let's kick off the Survivor Series predictions with the match on the kickoff show. A 10 on 10 tag team Survivor Series match, uh, Raw vs. SmackDown. And your combatants for Raw, it's Bobby Roode, Chad Gable, The Ascension, The Revival, The B Team, and Lucha House Party. For SmackDown, it's The Usos, The New Day, Sanity, Gallows and Anderson, and the Colognes. Honestly, this shouldn't be much of a... <laughs> this, is, this is getting eight confidence points. This is the match on, on Survivor Series I am most confident about, and it's on the kickoff show. Oh, imagine that. Um, how would I book this? I mean, it's quite simple. You could put the Usos and the New Day up against <laughs> the entire Raw tag team roster and they take them all out because they just look so much stronger. Um, I fully expect that basically... Um, I, would, I mean, I would book it to say that um, between the Usos and the New Day... And maybe a, a pin for, for Gallows and Anderson, just to give them a little bit of something. You would actually sort of completely 
uh, wipe out the Raw Tag Teams and they'd win like 5 nothing. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Um, I do think that maybe Bobby Roode and Chad Gable and maybe the Revival might get pinfalls here. Uh, and I, if they do, it'll be against Sanity and the Colognes. So my pick, my prediction is that Sanity is that um, Sanity SmackDown, SmackDown wins three to no to zero with the Usos, the New Day, and Gallows and Anderson being your surviving teams on this one. As I said, I got eight confidence points in this, and by the way. Bonus points here for predicting the correct score. In other words, how many survive. And also bonus points for each correctly picked survivor. That's one point per team um, or per individual in the single, in the uh, five on five matches. So because I'm picking Usos, New Day, and Gallows and Anderson, even if it is a 5 0 whitewash, I will. Pick up one point each for all of those, but I won't pick up the point for the correct score. There you go. That's how that works, you see? So, yeah, those are my cut. That's, um, it's on the kickoff show, and it's the match I'm most confident about. Who'd have thunk it? Okay, time for the main card proper. I'm going to start it off with the match. that I, I'm not sure this will start, but it'll be... It'll be a hot angle to start. It'll be a hot match to start on, I do think. Uh, And that is the match for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. The only title that's actually on the line here. Buddy Murphy defending his belt that he won at Super Showdown against Mustafa Ali. This is, I believe, his first title defense. And honestly, uh, I think it's too early to take the belt off Buddy Murphy. Yes, that was a real feel-good moment. And they have done that before with, you know, feel-good moment and then next opportunity, take it off. I don't think that's happening here. Buddy Murphy is, uh, I think... Uh, like most of 205 Live is at the moment, over like Rover. Uh, but I, I really think this is, as, as far as the main card goes, about as close to a lock as um, the kickoff show matches. Um, pretty much, I even if I were booking this, I would still book Buddy Murphy to win. Although I think it's going to be a, a really good back and forth match with both guys because we saw what Mustafa Ali could do at WrestleMania and oh boy did he shine with Cedric Alexander. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he does here with Buddy Murphy. And uh, But yeah, I would put Buddy Murphy to win and I think that is what's going to happen. Buddy Murphy will retain the Cruiserweight Championship. Next up, the first of the champion versus champion matches. This time it's a tag teams uh, as the Authors of Pain, of course, managed by Drake Maverick, take on Seamus and Cesaro, the bar, who have, of course, the big show with them. Does that make them the bar show? Hmm. Um, for me, I think this, uh, as a booking situation, for me, I... I Having seen the Office of Pain in NXT and watched some of the amazing matches, particularly the ones against um, Hashtag DIY and The Revival, um, they are they can be so awesome as a tag team. Really, really good. And I would say to Se- Seamus and Cesaro, look, Put these guys over. They are going to be the future of the tag team division in WWE. Um, I'm not sure that's going to happen. I know Big Show and Drake Maverick. Big Show will probably do something to Drake Maverick on the outside. Uh, (laughs) That'll probably be a comedy spot. 
in the match. Um, but I don't think WWE are going to go with that. But I only have two confidence points on this. So it's not as though I'm very confident in this prediction. Um, this is this is a toss-up in my view, and it's I think WWE will go with Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, looking at my predictions, I'm going pretty SmackDown heavy, um, but. I, I, I actually think, well, actually, looking at my booking, I'm going SmackDown heavy. My prediction's less so. Um, but, I mean, if to, to, to my mind, the one match that I, I looked at, there's two matches I looked at and would book them to Raw. But I, I think on this one, Sheamus and Cesaro will pick up the win with some big show interference. But I only have two confidence points on this. I'm not strong on this one. But yeah, my th my thought here is the bar will raise the bar and then drop it on the Authors of Pain. Next up, it is the Raw vs. Smackdown Women's Survivor Series match. Oh, is this going to be an overbooked situation? That's what I think. Um, let's run through your participants. From Raw, you have Mickey James, Nia Jax, Tamina, Natalia, and Ruby Riot, uh, with uh, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan alongside them at ringside, versus Carmella, Asuka, Sonya Deville, Naomi, and a fifth person to be named so there's a bonus point here for predicting uh that fifth person i'm gonna say nikki cross i think mandy rose will also be at ringside for this and i think she will come out with sonia deville and i think you will find that uh, be like, well if mandy rose isn't in the match who is that's when the shock value of nikki cross again uh, will sort of hit and they'll go, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, if it were me, I would book this as, again, SmackDown to win 2-0, two, two survivors, that being Asuka and Nikki Cross. And also I would book it that Sasha Banks and Bailey would interfere, but I'll talk more about that in my prediction because I think that that's going to happen anyway. My prediction is that Asuka will once again be the sole survivor, this time for SmackDown, and that Sasha Banks and Bailey will come out and cost Raw the match. Why? Because last Monday on Raw, Sasha Banks and Bailey were fighting for what they thought was going to be the last place in the Raw team for the Survivor Series match. It ended up in a big schmars double DQ uh, with Mickey James, Nia Jackson, Tamina basically squashing both women under the direction of Alexa Bliss. And it's going to look like that they just took out Raw. So that SmackDown could have the win. And they're going to be like, well, what the heck are Banks and Bailey up to? That's going to play into something later on. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think will be the main event. And there will be a very specific closing shot. I'll talk more about that later on. But yeah, I think Sasha Banks and Bailey are going to run down and they're going to deliberately cost draw the match so that it looks like they've turned on... What, are they joining SmackDown? Ooh, I don't think it'll be as straightforward as them just switching brands. That 
is the only clue. I've got six confidence points on, on, on SmackDown winning here. So I, I feel pretty strongly on this because I think I've read the tea leaves right. And I think I know what angle is being set up for this. Because this Survivor Series, I'm going to give you a hint here. It's not about the matches themselves. It's about the angles that are going to be set up from them. And this is one of those matches that's going to set up a number, well, a, a really big angle all the way through to WrestleMania. So, yes, yeah, Sasha Banks and Bayley will cost Raw the match, giving the win to SmackDown, and Asuka will be the sole survivor. And speaking of angles actually being set up after a match, this is one where I think, uh, this next one is where I think a, a big angle uh, for Raw will be set up. It is the Raw vs. SmackDown men's Survivor Series match, your combatants, Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, Finn Balor, and Bobby Ashley, along with team captain Baron Corbin, against The Miz, who's the team captain for SmackDown, Shane McMahon, Rey Mysterio, Samoa Joe, and Jeff Hardy. A lot of people are expecting Raw to go over on this Pretty handily. I think it's going to be a lot closer. It's not... I mean... There's going... You, you're going to see... Um, I think... You're going to see a, a situation... Where... You've got... A two-on-one... And let's face it... I mean, there's, there's a couple of possibilities there for that for who, for who the one could be from SmackDown. The one that's going to generate the most controversy is, of course, Shane McMahon. But if they're clever, they can still book Shane McMahon to suffer a pinfall in a, a humiliating way, to, you know, as if to say, well, I'm not the best in the world. And have Samoa Joe be the legitimate one uh, trying to go up against Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre, who I think are going to be the last two for Raw. That, I think, would, would be a hell of a match. And honestly, if it, it, I'll be honest here. I think WWE will probably book this so that Samoa Joe would lose as a result of this, and Strowman and McIntyre will stand tall. If I were booking it, however, I would book it so that the last three are Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre for Raw, Samoa Joe for SmackDown, have Joe pin Strowman, and then have McIntyre pin Joe, so that McIntyre would be the sole survivor. That could happen. But, um, I think Raw is going to win this by 2 to nil. Strowman and McIntyre being the two survivors. I've got five confidence points on this. Um, I'm most confident that, you know, this is the match where I look at it and feel strongest about Raw winning. Um, but in my view, it's going to set up Drew McIntyre as... Or possibly Braun Strowman, but I think it's going to be Drew. As uh, the next opponent for Brock Lesnar. That's what I think is going to happen. Next up, it is uh, the Raw Champion versus SmackDown Champion uh, match for uh, the mid... What's usually considered the mid-card titles. Uh, the Intercontinental Champion versus United States Champion. Intercontinental Champion for Raw, uh, Seth Rollins, takes on US Champion for SmackDown, Shinsuke Nakamura. This is the match I am least confident in. Because, frankly, this could go either way. And I've only got one confidence point on it. One single solitary confidence point on it, so I'm not confident on this. If I were booking it, I would book Shinsuke to go over. 
Why? Here's why. Because I th- Shinsuke has done nothing on SmackDown. He needs a win to start making him start look strong again. And um, a win against Seth Rollins would certainly do that. I don't think that's going to happen. WWE are very big on Seth Rollins. And understandably so. Uh, The guy is a hell of a performer. And he's not going to drop the ball here with Shinsuke. He's going to put Shinsuke over in defeat. Yeah, it, 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 you know, Shinsuke's going to lose. I, I think Rollins is going to win. I think that's the way WWE is going to book it. But he's going to make Shinsuke look a million bucks. Because that's what he does. So, yes, yeah, Seth Rollins will win, I think. But I've only got the one confidence point on it. Because, quite honestly, this is a coin flip. Next up... The match of something will be the main event. I don't, for a reason I will get into in the next match. But, um, this is the WWE Champion versus the Universal Champion. Universal Champion for Raw, Brock Lesnar, taking on WWE Champion Daniel Bryan in another Raw vs. SmackDown Champion vs. Champion match. Originally, this looked like it was going to be Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles 2. And I was ready and really wanting to see that match as well. Uh, Because they could have booked it in such a way. I mean, Lesnar losing here will not be a big deal. You're you're looking at me like, what? No, it would not be a big deal. Um, to lose in a champion versus champion match, because I don't think, in that sense, if they booked AJ Styles to to retain against Daniel Bryan, I think that would, you know, you would have set up an interesting story where how much did AJ learn from last year, and how much is would Brock Lesnar be thinking, well, I got AJ Styles again. I'm not bothered. Only to be caught by surprise by something AJ did and AJ possibly getting the win. That would have been, you know, that would have been a a moment, you know, along the lines of Goldberg squashing Lesnar in 1 minute 26 seconds in 2016. Wow, what a shock that was. Uh, But it would have been like, well, it wouldn't have been a shock, but it would have been like, wow. AJ still, AJ won, they allowed AJ to win. Bit of a surprise. It would still be a surprise, but it wouldn't have the shock value. And now Daniel Bryan has turned heel as well. Oh boy, this has got all sorts of interesting potential. Um, Many people have seen this as a dream match. It isn't for me. In my book, it's more of a nightmare match. Because honestly, um, I'm scared about Brock accidentally hurting Daniel Bryan in a way that forces him to retire. A la Bill Goldberg, Bret Hart. Yeah, I watched that happen. So, mm, don't don't say to me, oh, that was just bad. No, it could happen. Um, but I do have four confidence points on this. If I were booking this... This would this would be pretty much the overbooked cluster fox of a match because you'd have AJ Styles coming in to attack Daniel Bryan. You'd have Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre separately attacking Lesnar and also probably attacking each other as well. <laughs> Which I would, yeah, again, it would be over, it would be massively overbooked. I don't think if if I were doing it, I would really overbook it and have Daniel Bryan pick up the win. I don't think that's going to happen. I do think Styles is going to interfere. 
So I've got a, a, a point up for that if I if I get that sort of interference call right. Uh, just like there's a point up if I get the interference call about Banks and Bailey right from the Women's Survivor Series match. Um, but I think Brock Lesnar is going to win. I think AJ Styles is going to cost Daniel Bryan the match. I think that's going to set up some. Uh, that's going to set up storylines, at least the TLC, for that. So yeah, um, Brock Lesnar four confidence points on this one. I'm about middling on this. Literally, this again. It's I. It's about a seventy thirty in my view. Uh, whereas the ones I've got the really low confidence points on, they are fifty fifty. But I'm definitely thinking Brock Lesnar is probably going to win this one again. And lastly, our main event, the one I think will be the main event. It's a women's match, Raw vs. SmackDown, should have been champion vs. champion. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But it is Ronda Rousey, the Raw women's champion, taking on a former SmackDown women's champion, not the current one. In Charlotte Flair. Now, of course, this came about because of the go-home angle on Raw. Monday night, Becky Lynch leading an invasion of Raw with the SmackDown women's locker room and the Raw women uh, basically getting their asses handed to them. And it was an amazing angle. And yet in that moment, uh, in that melee, Nia Jax punched out Becky Lynch, gave her at least a broken nose, possibly a broken face, and also a concussion. So WWE's medical team basically said, you're not cleared for Sunday. You won't be ready for Sunday. So the next night on SmackDown, Becky Lynch had to stand there in the middle of the ring and handpick her a replacement. And that replacement was Charlotte Flair. And for me, that was not a big surprise. Because having seen what happened Monday with Sasha Banks and Bailey getting screwed out of a Survivor Series team spot by Alexa Bliss and the other heels of uh, the Raw Women's team, I thought, hmm, this is setting up some big angle to end Survivor Series. And there's only one big angle... I can think of. If I were booking this, I would book Charlotte Flair to hand Rousey her first loss. But it wouldn't be clean. You'd have, once again, Sasha Banks and Bailey interfering in the match to cost Ronda Rousey in a complete reversal from uh, what happened at Evolution where Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir interfered on Shayna Baszler's behalf to help her win the NXT Women's Championship. So you'd have the, the you'd have the the reversal. I I think that interference is going to happen. I think we are going to see Sasha Banks and Bailey twice tonight uh on on Sunday night. Um once in that Raw vs. SmackDown Women's Survivor Series match. And then, once again here, interfering in the match. The match will get thrown out. Uh, Charlotte will not be disqualified. Um, there will be no winner. Uh, I, 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 I don't think they're going to... It will just get completely thrown out. But you'll have... Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and Bailey, all beating up on Ronda Rousey, standing tall over her. When Becky Lynch's music hits, she comes out. She looks at the three of them. They embrace. And they stand tall over Ronda Rousey, who's lying there in the, in the ring. And they go, 
and do the four horsemen symbol that Charlotte's father, Ric Flair, announcing the arrival in WWE officially of the four horse women. And that is going to set up the angle that will run through Raw, through SmackDown, and through NXT. Yes, this, I'm pretty sure, is going to run right across the brands. Because my betting here is that Flair, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, uh, uh, um, Sasha Banks, and Bailey. All of them will say, we are the four horsewomen of WWE. We are bigger than Raw. We are bigger than SmackDown. We are bigger than NXT. We are bigger than any one brand. And we will do what we want and create whatever chaos we want to create. And it will be, quite honestly, the moment that sets up What could be like a year's or more worth of booking for for the four horsewomen. You could see them taking on um, Jessamine Duke, Marina Shavir and Shayna Baszler in NXT um, and literally like yeah, and also taking on Ronda Rousey, probably on pay-per-views. And it's going to build up for Ronda Rousey to facing Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. And I think it will still be champion versus champion at this point. There will be no titles on the... Yeah, there will be no titles on the line here. And I, I really think that you're looking at a setup probably to next year's Survivor Series of a elimination match, not a five on five, but a four on four. Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler. Jessamine Duke, Marina Shafir, the four horsewomen of MMA taking on Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, and Bailey, the four horsewomen of WWE. Four horsewomen versus four horsewomen, I think, is being set up for next year. Or maybe, maybe not Survivor Series, maybe next year's Evolution. If they decide to run that yearly. It may be that you get that at Evolution. Who knows? But that's the thinking at this point. Is that I'm going to say there's no winner. Sasha Banks, Bailey will interfere. Becky Lynch will then come down. They'll stand tall over Ronda Rousey doing the four horsewomen symbol. And that will be your closing shot. Of Survivor Series 2018. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. So those are my predictions. For Survivor Series. Yeah. So what do you think of my predictions? Uh, Do you agree with me about the four horsewomen versus four horsewomen angle? Uh, Whatever your thoughts are. Drop something down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Like, share, subscribe. Follow uh, WrestlePod on Facebook and uh, keep an eye out. I will be reviewing TakeOver and Survivor Series in the next week. So keep an eye out for those. And also, I'm planning a series of other videos in the WrestlePod series to um, try and, uh, let's say, provide some extra content as well. So look out for that uh, coming soon. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay sharp, stay tuned.